Welcome to solving a quadratic by factoring. Let, let's start doing some problems. So let's say I had a function f of x is equal to x squared plus 6x plus 8. Now if I were to uh, graph f of x, the graph is going to look something like this. I don't know exactly what it's going to look like, but it's going to be a parabola and it's going to intersect the x-axis at a couple of points here and here. And what we're going to try to do is determine what those two points are. So first of all, when a function intersects the x-axis, that means f of x is equal to 0, because this is the f of x-axis, similar to the y-axis. So here, f of x is 0. So in order to solve this equation, we set f of x to 0, and we get x squared plus 6x plus 8 is equal to 0. Now this might look like you could solve it pretty easily, but that x squared term kind of messes things up, and you could try it out on your, for yourself. So what we're going to do is factor this, and we're going to say that x squared plus 6x plus 8, that this can be written as x plus something times x plus something, and we'll still equal that, set that to equal 0. Now in this presentation, I'm going to just show you the the systematic, or you could say the mechanical way of doing this. And I'm going to give you another presentation on, on why this works. And, and you might want to just multiply out the answers we get and, and multi -out, multiply out the expressions and, and see why it works. And the, the, the method we're going to use is we look at the coefficient on this x term, and it's 6, and we say what two numbers will add up to 6, and when those same two mul numbers are multiplied, you're going to get 8. Well, let's just think about the factors of 8. The factors of 8 are 1, 2, 4, and 8. Well, 1 times 8 is 8, but 1 plus 8 is 9, so that doesn't work. 2 times 4 is 8, and 2 plus 4 is 6, so that works. So we could just say x plus 2 and x plus 4 is equal to 0. Now, if two expressions or two numbers times each other equals 0, that means that one of those two numbers, or both of them, must equal 0. So we have to now we could say that x plus 2 equals 0 or or and x plus 4 is equal to 0. Well, this is just a very simple equation. We subtract 2 from both sides and we get x equals negative 2. And here we get x equals minus 4. And if we substitute either of these into the original equation, we'll see that it works. Minus 2, so let's, let's just try it with minus 2, and I'll leave it minus 4 up to you. So minus 2 squared plus 6 times minus 2 plus 8. Minus 2 squared, that's a squared, is 4 minus 12, 6 times minus 2, plus 8. And sure enough, that equals 0. And if you did the same thing with negative 4, you'd also see that that works. And, and you might be saying, wow, this is interesting. This is an equation that has two solutions. Well, if you think about it, it makes sense because the graph of f of x is intersecting the x-axis in two different places. Let's do another problem. Let's say I had f of x is equal to 2x squared plus 20x plus 50. So if we want to figure out where it intersects the x-axis, we just set f of x equal to 0. And I'll just swap the left and right, left and right sides of the equation. And I get 2x squared plus 20x plus 50 equals 0. Now, what's a little different this time from last time is here the coefficient on an x squared is actually a 2 instead of a 1. And I like it to be a 1. So let's divide the whole equation, both the left and right sides, by 2. And then I get x squared plus 10x plus 25 equals 0. So all I did is I multiplied 1 half times this. So the same thing as dividing by 2. I did times 1 half. And of course, 0 times 1 half is 0. Now we're ready to do what we did before. And you might want to pause it and try it yourself. We're going to say x plus something times x plus something 
is equal to 0. And those two not somethings, they should add up to 10. And when you multiply them, they should be 25. Let's think about the factors of 25. You have 1, 5, and 25. Well, 1 times 25 is 25, but 1 plus 25 is 26, not 10. 5 times 5 is 25, and 5 plus 5 is 10. So 5 actually works. So actually, it turns out that both of these numbers are 5. And so you get x plus 5 equals 0, or x plus 5 equals 0. So you just have to really write it once. So you get x equals negative 5. So how do we think about this graphically? I just told you a lot of, that these equations can intersect the x-axis in two places, but this one only has one solution. Well, this solution would look like this. If this is x equals negative 5, we'd have a parabola that just touches right there and then comes back up. So instead of intersecting two places, it only intersects right there at x equals negative 5. And now as an exercise, just to prove to you that I'm not, I'm not teaching you incorrectly, let's, let's multiply x plus 5 times x plus 5 just to show you that it equals what it should equal. So we just say that this is the same thing as x times x plus 5 plus 5 times x plus 5. x says x squared plus 5x plus 5x plus 25. And that's x squared plus 10x plus 25. So it equals what we said it should equal. And I'm going to, once again, do another module where I explain this a little bit more. Let's do one more problem. And this one I'm just going to cut to the chase. Let's just solve x squared minus x minus 30 is equal to 0. Once again, two numbers, when we add them, they equal, what's the coefficient here? It's negative 1. So we could even say, we could say those two numbers are a plus b equals minus 1. And a times b will equal minus 30. Well, let's just think about what all the factors are of 30. There's 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 10. 15 and 30. Well, something interesting is happening this time, though. Since a times b is negative 30, one of these numbers have to be negative. They both can't be negative, because if, um, if they were both negative, then this would be a positive 30. So a times b is negative 30. So it's actually, we're going to have to say two of these factors, the difference between them should be negative 1. Well, if we look at all of these, all of these numbers, obviously, when you pair them up, they multiply out to, to 30. But the only ones that have a difference of 1 is 5 and 6. And since it's a negative 1, it's going to be, and I know I'm going very fast at this, and I'll do more example problems. It will be x minus 6 times x plus 5 is equal to 0. So how did I think about that? Negative 6 times 5 is negative 30. Negative 6 plus 5 is negative 1. So it works out. And the more and more you do these practices, I know it seems a little confusing right now. It'll make a lot more sense. So you get x equals 6 or x equals negative 5. I think at this point you're ready to try some, uh, some solving quadratics by factoring. And I'll do a couple more modules just so you get some more practice problems. Have fun.